At this time, I will open the meeting. And if you would stand with me for the invocation, please. Gracious Father, we come before you tonight to ask that you be with us as we move forward, as we make decisions that will impact our students, our parents, and our system as a whole. We ask that you give us the strength, the courage, and the wisdom to do the things that are best for all in Brunswick County Schools. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please repeat with me the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag. Okay. We have no salutes, no public address, and our presentation, teacher's voice, Miss Jenny Bryan. Brunswick County Schools Teacher of the Year. Welcome, Ms. Brown. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Good evening. It is nice to be here speaking with you all again this evening and to have a moment to share the teacher's voice. Uh, last month, I shared a little bit about myself and spoke about tax vision for this year of continuing to focus on student voice while giving special attention to the social and emotional health of our students. Tonight and in the months to come, the teacher's voice time will be used to spotlight various teachers in Brunswick County Schools who are doing innovative work in their classrooms, promoting student voice and social emotional learning. Tonight, um, you'll hear from my South Brunswick High School colleague, which I think is only appropriate given that West Brunswick and North Brunswick are represented here. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> um, but you're going to hear from my colleague, um, Mr. Mr. Ian Sands, who is an art teacher at South Brunswick High School. And I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I didn't really know a whole lot about Mr. Sands um, prior to this year. He, although his, his classroom is at the front of the building right when you walk in, he kind of keeps a low profile. Um, until recently, I had no idea that in addition to being a children's book author and illustrator, he is truly a leader in the art education world, having published two art education books. Mr. Sands has created a student-centered art studio at South Brunswick High School, and he says he is no longer interested in teaching art, but rather in making artists. And now I'll let him share the rest. And you'll want to turn your attention to the back screen for that. Teaching for artistic behavior is a teaching philosophy that believes the student is the artist and the art room is their studio. It's student-directed, choice-based teaching where we give them challenges and the students have to come up with the projects themselves as opposed to us giving them the projects. So they design the project, they have their inspiration, then they create the project and then they have to reflect on the project. And it's all based on their choices and what they're going to do to solve the solution. tab situation in particular, the students in control over the time, the content, the activity itself. And I think having that control you know, allows a student to just kind of de-stress. Like a lot of times you're in a classroom or even if you're online, you've got to get these projects done, you've got to get this stuff done. But when you're in control of yourself, that gives you that ability to really kind of de-stress and allow some things to go, just depressurize. Um, it gets students, or get, in general, it gets students off the screen. We are so much on the screen now. It's nice to be able to actually pick up some art supplies and work for an hour just, you know, feeling the material in your hands, holding a pencil and eraser. Like those, those tactical feelings are there. That I think is really important to get us away from this all day long and making the art. And third, um, there's a lot of emotional issues that students have, and they really work it out through the art.
into them, teaching fraud, teaching behaviors, we, we were lucky that we had that in place because it was one of the biggest opportunities. Because we could turn to students and say, you don't have the material, what materials do you have? Because in a choice-based classroom, the student makes those decisions anyway. So if they have paint, they're going to work in paint. If they only had pencil, they could work in pencil, and they could still do the assignments. If they had to go outside and find sticks and make the art of sticks, they could still do the assignment and find the solutions to the challenges we were asking them. So that was a real good opportunity that we had. And the students have stepped up to the plate. You know, they're, they're learning to schedule their own time, which they've never had to do before. They're learning to find materials on their own. They're, 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 they're stepping up to the plate and doing great art. Thank you. <clears throat> At this time, we will move to the approval of the meeting agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Okay. Mr. Benton has made the motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. And Ms. Cook has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And none opposed, uh, motion carried. Okay. We also next have approval of minutes from October 6, 2020, October 20th, 2020, October 20th, 2020. Which the 6th would be our regular meeting, the 1st 20th would be operations, and then the 2nd October 20th would be curriculum policy and committee meeting. Do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Lemon and second? Second. Ms. Cook, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion carried. We now have consent items for approval. Number one, temporary construction easement. Number two, Southport Elementary roof design contract. Number three, Budget amendment. Number four, developmental daycare center contract. And number five, clinical agreement, Brunswick Community College Practical Nursing Education Program. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the consent items as uh, presented. Okay, Ms. Cook has made the motion to approve. Do I have a second? I second. Okay, Mr. Benton has seconded. All in favor? Aye. And none opposed. Motion carried. Consent items are approved. Next, we have action items for approval. No Which there are none. So with that, we will now move to discussion, announcement, and announcements by superintendent and board members. Dr. Oates. Good evening, Madam Chair and board members. Um, first, let me start with some congratulatory remarks. First of them being to Holly Borden. Ms. Borden is from Shalote Middle, and she has recently been recognized as the North Carolina PE Teacher of the Year. Uh, she was chosen out of over 4,000 educators across the state for this award. So once again, we have uh, Brunswick County has gotten another um, feather in our cap with another statewide winner. So congratulations to Ms. Borden. Also, um, Ms. Bryan, best wishes to her, our Teacher of the Year, as she will go and interview as she competes for the Regional Teacher of the Year here soon. So we wish you all of Brunswick County luck behind that interview. And uh, thank you again for representing us so well. Um, Union Elementary has once again received the National Title I Distinguished School Recognition. I'm not mistaken, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think this may be the second or third year this has happened uh, for Union. So I wanted to recognize them. Um, if you remember, we had a presentation from Novant Health some time ago. 
and it was for uh, telemedicine and, and telepsychology. Uh, the Novant Health Brunswick Medical Foundation has been awarded $400,000 in a grant from the Duke Endowment to support telehealth and telepsychology efforts in Brunswick County Middle Schools. So they will start that effort in partnering with us to help our students as we have uh, worked to, to get that that grant with them. So that is a wonderful thing to, to know. Um, also, we have with us tonight the new principal of Leland Middle School, Dr. Kimberly McDuffie. She's there in, there in the back. She is uh, on board and she has hit the ground running. Um, so she is leading that school and we're expecting some great things from her. We were able to snag her from Onslow County and uh, we are definitely glad to have you here with us. So thank you for being here, Ms. Dr. McDuffie. Um, just by way of information, um, the redistricting process, you know, is underway. And uh, on October 29th, we had our kickoff virtual meeting. Uh, that was the first one that we had. There was a, a total of only 48 views on YouTube thus far. Um, there were eight live viewers on the 29th. Two of those were local media and two were employees. Now, there have been just over 1,300 visits to our redistricting webpage um, for people getting information. So I just wanted to let you know that this process is continuing, um, and we are making all of these meetings accessible. But as I just read to you the, the stats on uh, viewership, we are hoping that these increase. Uh, and talking with Daniel today, of course, I think uh, the pandemic may have taken a front seat to some of the information that is being um, digested. So we're still working to get that information out. Um, along with that, the COVID dashboard we talked about at our last um, committee meeting. And I want to just, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, I think as of today, it was last updated at 1030 this morning, uh, we had uh, 31 cases since. September 21st, and of those 31, 20, 38, I'm sorry, 38 cases, and of those, 31 have um, recovered. So we're still, right now, we're working with uh, seven, eight positive cases. Also with that, interesting, Ms. <laughs> Wanda Willis comes in, uh, as we're talking about COVID, uh, <laughs> Nurse Willis. <laughs> we... Um, the biggest thing with this is really we're seeing the number of positive cases not affecting us. I mean, I don't want to say not affecting, but there's not a large number. The large number comes from those who are quarantined. And um, right now, if I'm not mistaken, looking at the dashboard, we're having about 79 of our folks, which will include students and staff, that have been quarantined because of the positive um, positive cases that we have in the school, the contacts around them. Um, and I'm glad she's here. So, Nurse Willis, would you mind just giving us a, kind of a rundown of if we have a positive case, how that information is shared um, in the school and to parents? If you want to come up, you can. Good evening. So anytime we have a positive case, whether it be a student or a staff member, COVID nurse is called or myself is called. We've had so many here lately. I'm still helping her with all that too. But we immediately call the health department and give them every bit of information that was given to us. We don't make any decisions on our own. We give that to them. They take that information and they look at it and they might call us back and say, well, do you have a seating chart for the classroom? send that or do you have a seating chart for the bus send that they ask for extra information we get that information send that to them then they call us back and tell us exactly what to do for instance they might say go to the classroom seating chart and pull student blah blah they give us the names these are the students who need to go home they might take the bus a seating chart and pull those students and say these are the ones that need to go home but um at any time, whether it be a teacher or a student. And luckily, we, not, we have not had many staff being positive, but staff do become contacts because they're helping our children. But so every that, directive that we follow is straight from the health So department. that decision about who is quarantined is completely handled by the health department? Correct. Okay. Correct. 
Thank you. Appreciate that. So as you can see, we are definitely following the lead of our um, health officials and as we work to uh, work through the pandemic. One other is uh, issue I wanted to raise um, as information to the board for further consideration as we, we move forward. Um, if you remember during the budget process and we were talking about supplements and we were given different options about um, attracting candidates to Brunswick County, there was discussion about critical needs incentives and I think we're at the point we may need to go back and revisit that when it comes to critical need positions, particularly in the areas of EC and math. Um, right now we are having a time, um, more so now than ever, attracting candidates to come um, and work with our EC population and in our math classrooms. Um, the, one of the disheartening things is um, coming out of UNCW at this point, which of course is a major provider of our teaching staff, to my understanding there are only three graduates in December that will have EC degrees. Hmm. Um, and I can't say if they have already taken position, but I'm sure someone you know, may have already tried to snap them up. Um, in my estimation, our best option would be possibly to look at providing um, a robust incentive to not only attract those who are coming directly out of college, but to possibly entice those who are in other districts to come to Brunswick. Uh, so what I would ask is if you would allow me and my staff to work to put together some options for you for consideration as we go forward to, to combat the, the, um, the issue that we have with these critical need areas. I agree. Yeah. Everyone agree? Yeah, oh yeah, Con mm -hmm. construction, math, and <clears throat> AC. Any of the, any of the areas? Yes, and please we'll do that, okay. um, Dr. Oates, and, and bring that back. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, that's all I have. Thank you so much. Okay, any, any other? Well, I wanted to ask uh, about the scheduled committee meeting in November. I have spoken with two of cabinet members uh, regarding um, committee meetings. Um, there may be, because of the, the change of the board that's getting ready to take place, we may need to consider holding um, holding off on committee until we can get the new board seated. Um, what would happen is if we had a committee meeting as it's printed, we would be putting things on the consent agenda for new members who have not been informed well enough of the goings on uh, in the meeting. So if there's anything that is pressing, we may need to look at having it, but if, they, if, it can, if your information can be held until the next time, uh, it may be to our advantage to do that and bring new, the new members up to speed. But we can definitely discuss that and give you a definite answer um, when we return on Thursday. Any other comments? Yeah, or? Uh, I want to ask about the possibility of doing the committee meeting, and I know the new board won't be on yet, on the same day at the meeting, like December 1st. So that can be discussed with the old board. No, no decisions made, and if the new members can attend, then at the regular meeting that decision can be voted on. That's true. You know, as a as a possibility, if you have things that need to be done, right? So, okay, sounds good. So. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Oates. At this time, um, I will entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. And Ms. Cook has made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, we will take five minutes and go into executive session.